Well, good morning. Happy Sunday to you. I'm Professor Wood, and I'm going to be pre your professor for the next eight weeks for Leveraging Technology for All. I think this is a great time to be taking this class, a really interesting time to be taking this class, because we've just come out of 18 months where we were working to leverage technology for all. But a lot of people don't understand that assistive technology uh, is something that we all use every day. So if I put on my glasses right now, that's assistive technology. If I put subtitles on the TV shows so my husband and I can understand it better, that's assistive technology. If I use audio text to send a message, that's assistive technology. And even right now, as I'm talking to you, this is assistive technology. And if we hadn't had this type of assistive technology during the pandemic, we wouldn't have been able to service our children. And there were times where it was um, very easy to be out of compliance because of the lack of assistive technology or things in place. So when we're looking at assistive technology, assistive technology serves everyone. But we specifically want to look at, you know, individuals with disabilities and the IDEA, the Individuals with Disabilities Educational Act. And we want to look at how assistive technology helps special needs students, English language learners, and students that are near or below poverty level. Um, and one of the things that I'm sure you already know is that when we went online during the pandemic, we needed to make sure that all students had assistive technology, meaning computers, but not only computers, not only devices, but also Wi-Fi to make sure that they could access this technology. Um, another thing that I want you to consider, you know, as we're looking at assistive technology, is who gets left out of the conversation? Who gets left out of the conversation if they don't have assistive technology? And in today's fast-paced world of media, um, people do get left out. I was just telling my students recently, when my mom was still with me, that I remember when she went to go get her driver's license renewed at the DMV. And uh, they had started using, you were taking, you took the driver's license test through a computer. Well, my mom was in her 80s. Um, she'd never used computers. She didn't know how to navigate a computer. And so when she went to take the test, my oldest daughter, my oldest child went with her and they wouldn't let her go back to assist her with the technology. And the DMV person was unwilling to assist her with the technology. And so my mom failed the test and she came home and she was very, very upset. Um, we went back and we handled the situation and we were an advocate, you know, for my mother. But how many people don't have advocates that go back and fuss if um, somebody's left out of the conversation because of assistive technology? So as we go through this course, you want to look at those ethical concerns and consider even now, especially now, who is being left out of the conversation and how can we make sure that everybody's part of the conversation and that everybody is being served properly through assistive technology. Okay. So this is your first week. You're going to be looking at the history of assistive technology. If you're not uh, familiar with the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, IDEA, 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 sorry, I'm talking too fast today. I have way too much coffee. Um, you're going to be uh, considering assessments for AT tools for effectiveness and looking at AT tools applied to the writing process. One of the things that I love with um, some of my uh, students is that if they are not fast typers or if they may have a processing issue, um, I love to teach them audio text. I love to teach them how to take notes on their phone with audio. Um, I often tell students, you know, dictate to yourself your writing in audio text, you know, in notes in your phone, and then you can just transpose it to the paper. So there's all sorts of cool things that you can do um, related to the writing process to be able to help students level the playing field and bring everybody to the table because people have a lot to say and people deserve to be able to say it. And we don't want technology to hinder somebody's communication or connection. We want technology to enhance communication and connection. Okay, so uh, just scrolling down, 
you've got readings and videos this week and you're gonna read chapters one and two in Dell. And there's some optional reading you can look at, which is um, the IDEA annual report to Congress. I think it's always good to just kind of see what's going on and how these things are navigated um, through the Department of Education and through policies and through government. Then you're going to watch the video, Understanding Assistive Technology, and then you're going to meet someone who's actually using assistive technology in the second video. Don't forget to submit your discussion board post. Your initial post should be posted on or before 11.59 p.m. on Thursday night, and your two follow-up responses should be posted on or before 11.59 p.m. on Sunday night. Uh, you have an e-lesson, a self-paced e-lesson that you're going to be looking at about IDEA background and basics. And then you have some assignments that you're going to be working on. And I'm not going to go through all of that here because I don't think you need me to yet. Um, if you have any questions, the best way to get hold of me is through email. I'm very fast on email. And you know it's always hard to uh, uh, get to a phone in the classroom, but you can text me and I will get back to you right away. Um, I don't want to overwhelm you this morning. I just wanted you to know that I'm happy to be your professor, and I really do think you're going to find this class very interesting. Okay, I'm already at seven minutes, so I'm going to stop talking now. Have a wonderful week, and I look forward to working with you. Bye-bye.